also on the Facebook. This is Wednesday study. But hopefully you're watching these in order on a playlist and there's just no telling when you're going to come across it. Hope everybody's doing well. Rainy day today on 515 24. Continuing on in First Peter, we didn't do anything in the New Living yesterday. We just sort of ran through it in the complex King King James, as the epistles are very difficult in the King James. But which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. And this alludes to... Okay, so that in the days of Noah, those fallen angels that... Broke the rules. Remember, this is all a big movie. So they broke the rules um, and had sex with human women. So they left their state and went into a different state to where this was able to happen. And it says they created mighty men, men of renown. There were giants in those days, and that's how the giants came about. And it was sons, sons of God, which are fallen angels, saw daughters of men, or angels are sons of God, as Adam was, as Jesus was. And they saw the daughters of men, so that means the women were born of humans. Sons of God, so you're of God, so you're, you didn't come out of a womb. Of, well, Jesus did, but sperm to egg womb situation birthing process so sons of god saw daughters of men and took them as wives created mighty men men every now they were giants of those days noah was perfect in his generations and as you can see it's highlighted in the days of noah is there so those particular fallen angels are chained they're not out possessing anybody or being demons or, you know, they're, they will not be involved in the end times or anything like that. So, with some time, we're disobedient. When once thought the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth always now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in the baptism, it is said that what that was about was the pitch. Noah's Ark, the pitch. The pitch of Noah's Ark. For those who are not geologists, pitch is a black glue-like substance left behind when coal tar is heated or distilled. What was the pitch on Noah's Ark? Genuine wood tar. And... Let me see here. And so let's go to, so people don't get confused with water baptism being necessary. Remember, it's one Lord. That's the creator God. That's not just the God of the Old Testament or just Jesus of the New Testament, which were the actor gods playing the role that the creator God, the sovereign God, ordained they would play as their stories are written in the word before the world began. So what seems like cause and effect constantly, like God's reacting to what the Jews are doing, well, that's just the actor God playing the role that the creator God ordained he would play in a cameo appearance as himself to bring about this entire story. This is all just one big, long story of the sheep's salvation. It's all about his bride. It's all about his bride. It's a love story. It's about a, a husband 
and his bride. So when you read this in a new living, it says those who disobeyed God. So he went and preached into the spirits in prison, those who disobeyed God long ago, like we talked about, when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is the picture of baptism, which, again, John the Baptist did. It was to become a proselyte Jew. You had to be circumcised. But see, now it's a circumcision of the heart. And you had to be, uh, you had to have an animal sacrifice. And now we are, uh, it's, it's us, it's our flesh that's sacrificed. Just like Jesus sacrificed his flesh. We die to self daily, the daily cross. It's a death to self. And they had a water baptism. You had to be completely washed in water. And of course, just like now it's a circumcision of the heart. Now it's a spiritual baptism as John the Baptist said, one will come after me that will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so it's one Lord, one faith. So it's that one spiritual calling. And then it says one baptism, which is your spiritual calling. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And John the Baptist said, one will come after me. That will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. So when you say it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, it's, it's, it's just like the way grace is like faith. Well, your baptism is faith. It's a spiritual baptism. Saul, on the road to Damascus, Saul, on the road to Damascus, book of Acts. So it's Acts 9. And I just wanted to make sure it was 9 because I was reading in the book and I was like, yeah, that's Acts 9. But I was afraid maybe it was Acts 11. So I don't have to go back and change that in my book. Um. But let's continue on. And the water, which is a picture of baptism for Noah's Ark. Okay, the flood, the water, which was baptizing the earth, so to speak, cleansing it. Which now saves you. And your baptism is what saves you. Remember, Lord says you must be baptized. But it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And the baptism that saves is from the Holy Spirit. So let's keep reading. But as a response to God, but as a response to God from a clean conscience, it is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So your baptism now is that response. as a response from God. So you're being baptized by the Holy Spirit. And you get this clean conscience. And it goes on to say it is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Which was the new covenant, which changed things from a water baptism ritual to a spiritual baptism, spiritual. So all of that, let's continue then in the King James verse 21. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of filth of the flesh, because it's not a water baptism on your skin anymore, but the answer of good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you see how layered that is. And a fake church can sit there and just sweep right over that and say, well, you got to get baptized. Who else? We ba so why do you think clowns get dunked in water at the fair? It's to make fun of that dunking that they do in these churches. And somebody I know, their fake church just had this carnival they had all these different swimming pools and they were baptizing like 400 people in a day. 
It's a carnival. It's a joke. There was no such. I'll tell you what. There wasn't one person on those grass fields that day because I saw a video of it. Not one person there was a called sheep. Not one. A called sheep wouldn't be caught dead at a place like that. Now, there might have been some lost sheep there. But if you're playing the odds, that was a total goat carnival. 10,000%. What are you going to do with that? There's nothing you can do with that. It's just it's the Lord's story. We're all just living in it. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. So then since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. Well, that's what we were talking about, the daily cross, the death to self. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your lives chasing your own desires, but will be anxious to do the will of God. Well, the Lord beats the world out of you. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lavaciousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So you're not doing it but they're all speaking evil of you because you're not doing it. So you have had enough in the past of the evil thing of the God, that the godless people enjoy their immorality, their lust, their feasting, their drunkenness, their wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Well, Christmas, Easter, all that. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. <laughs> All right, Revelation Church of Philadelphia, let's go. And unto the angel of the Church of Philadelphia, right? These things say of he, Jesus, that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth no man openeth. That's telling you in less words that there's no man's free will decisions taking place. This is all done in the spirit realm. Jesus opens doors. He shuts doors. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not defiled my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. What is the hour of temptation? Is that meaning you won't be involved in the great tribulation? No, that means when the whole world is being handed over to the strong delusion, the sheep are not. Jesus said, if it were possible, even my very sheep or my very elect would be fooled. But the elect are not fooled because they're kept from that hour of temptation. They're not fooled. They're not tempted to worship the image of the beast. They're not going to fall for the fact that the whole world's going to be believing that the Antichrist returned from the dead when, in fact, it was just a body double switch. Which shall come, the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world. For God shall send them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie, right? To try them that dwell upon the earth. Oh boy. Behold. I come quickly. So in this, when this great tribulation, I mean, excuse me, when this abomination of desolation, this hour of temptation is taking place, which kicks off the three and a half day great tribulation, he's saying, I come quickly. Hold that fast, which thou hast that no man take thy crown. If you're a sheep, nobody will take your crown. 
him that overcometh, all sheep will, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of my city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which come up down out of heaven as a bride from God. And I will write upon him my new name. Yes, he that have an ear, all sheep do. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I'm glad you're here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.